this is Algebra 2, Lesson 2. We're going to talk about negative exponents, the product and power theorems for exponents, and circle relationships. We're starting on page 26. Okay, negative exponents. 2 cubed is defined as 2 times 2 times 2. Remember, that's a definition. Some, some mathematicians decided that 2 to 3 is going to equal 2 times 2 times 2, which of course equals 8. 2 to the negative 3 is defined as 1 over 2 cubed. So this is actually going to equal 1 eighth. Okay? The definition of x to the negative n, if n is any real number, and x is any real number that is not 0. So if those are true, then x to the negative n equals 1 over x to the n. Okay, so let's try simplifying these. First we have 1 over 3 to the negative 2. Okay, 3 to the negative 2 means we're actually going to flip that, right? This is the same as 1 divided by 1 third. This is actually now positive. Which means we're just going to flip this guy. So this equals 3 squared. Okay, if there's a negative in the bottom, we just push it up to the top. B. 3 negative cubed. The negative flips this to the bottom. 1 over 3 cubed. Here we have negative 3, the negative 2. So this is going to equal minus 3 squared. D. I guess we could actually answer these. 3 squared is 9. 1 over 3 cubed is 1 27th. This is negative 1 over 3 squared, so this is going to be negative 1 ninth. This is negative 3. There we go. So it's 1 over negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared is 9, so this is going to be positive 1 ninth. In E, we have negative, negative 3 to the negative 3. Leave that negative out in front. We're going to flip the negative 3 here underneath, and that becomes a positive. So now we have negative over negative 3 cubed is negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9, times negative 3, which is negative 27. Now we have a negative and a negative, so they cancel each other out, and we have a positive 1 over 27. Okay, watch your negatives. The product theorem for exponents. x squared is the same as x times x, right? x cubed is x times x times x. So x squared times x cubed is going to be x times x times x times x times x, which is the same as x to the fifth. x to the fifth is x squared times x cubed. So all we have to do when we are multiplying these times each other, we're going to add the exponents. So here's the rule. If m and n are real numbers and x does not equal 0, 
then x to the m times x to the n equals x to the m plus n. Okay? Let's try an example. The trick to these is taking your time and not getting confused, okay? x squared times x times x to the negative fifth times y to the negative fourth times x to the fifth times x to the zero. All right, first of all, anything to the zero is one, right? So we're just gonna cancel this guy out. Now we're gonna put like terms together. We have x squared, we have x to the fifth, I mean negative fifth, and we have x to the positive fifth. Okay, now let's put our y's together. We have y and y to the negative four. Now we're gonna add the exponents. We have x squared, so two minus five is negative three, plus five is back to two. So this is x squared, and we have y to the first, times y to the negative four, so this is y to the negative three. We can rewrite this x squared y cubed. Okay? If the book doesn't say otherwise, your exponents need to be positive when you come to your answer. So if you ended up with this, move this down so that our exponents are positive. Okay? Okay, here's another one. Once again, Take your time, get all the like terms together, and go one step at a time. So we have x to the fourth times x to the negative tenth. It wouldn't hurt to put all of this together. So here's x to the negative third. Let's bring that up, x to the third. Here's x squared, so we're going to change that to the x to the negative two so we can bring it on top. Here's one y, y to the negative third, y to the fifth, y to the negative sixth, so we're gonna change that to a positive and bring it up to the top, and y to the negative tenth, so we can bring it up on top. Okay, now we're gonna simplify this mess. Four minus 10 is negative six, plus three is negative three, minus two is negative five, so x to the negative five, y to the 1 minus 3 is negative 2, plus 5 is 3, plus 6 is 9, minus 10 is negative 1. Okay, now we can flip both of these. So we've got 1 over x to the fifth y. Okay, let's move on to the power theorem for exponents. x cubed, cubed, oh, sorry, that's a square. I can't read my own handwriting. x squared cubed is the same as x times x times x times x times x times x, right? And now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 x's, which equals x to the 6th. So here's the theorem. If m and n are real numbers, x to the m quantity to the n equals x to the m times n. So if all the variables are real numbers, then x to the m times a to the y times z to the b times k to the c, etc., 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 all to the n equals x to the mn times a to the yn times z to the bn times k to the cn, etc., etc., etc. So when the exponent is on the outside and you're raising one exponent by another exponent, then we're going to multiply. Okay? So let's try this one. Once again, we're going to take your time do this one part at a time. We have x, x to the negative 3 squared, so we're going to multiply these and we're going to end up with x to the negative 6, 
Here's y. Before we do anything else, let's get rid of these outside exponents. So we've got x to the 1 to x to the negative 3. So that, I mean, to the negative 3. So that's going to be negative 3. y to the negative 2 times to the negative 3. So that's y to the 6, because the negatives cancel. Over y squared cubed. That's y to the 6 y to the negative 3 stays the same, and this is going to be x to the 6th. Okay, let's do the same thing, get everything up on top, and put all of our like terms together. So we have x times x to the negative 6 times x to the negative 3 times x to the negative 6. Um, for the y's, we have y, y to the 6th, y to the negative 6, and y to the 3. Because we brought it up on top and it was negative, so now it's positive. Alright, now let's cancel this mess. Or simplify it, rather. So this is x to the 1. Minus 6 is negative 5. Minus 3 is negative 8. Minus 6 is negative 14. And we have y. 1 plus 6 is 7, minus 6 is 1, plus 3 is 4. So this is going to equal y to the 4th over x to the 14th. It's ugly, but it's correct. Circle relationships. If we know the area of a circle, we can find the diameter of the circle, and then we can find the radius of the circle. If we know the circumference of a circle, we can also find the diameter and the radius of the circle. If we can find, if we know the area, if we know the radius or diameter, then we can find the area or the circumference. So we can go from the area of a triangle to the circumference of a triangle, or from the circumference of a triangle to the area of a triangle. So let's try it. The area of a circle is 12.2 meters squared. What is the approximate circumference of the circle? We know the area equals pi r squared. And in this case, the area is 12.2. So r squared is going to be 12.2 divided by pi and r is going to be the square root of that. Okay, this is one of those cases where we are going to use a calculator and we're going to get a decimal. Okay? So the square root of 12.2 over pi is approximately, because we're using approximate measurements for pi, it's approximately 1.97 meters. So that's radius. If this is the radius, then the circumference is 2 pi r. So that's going to equal approximately 2 times 1.97 times pi. 2 1.97 times pi which equals approximately again 12.38 meters. Okay? Now we're going to start from the circumference. The circumference of a circle is 8 pi centimeters. What is the area? So the circumference of a circle equals 2 pi r and this equals 8 pi. If we divide both sides by 2 pi we can solve for r. r equals the pi's cancel and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So the radius is 4 centimeters. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So this is going to equal pi times 4 squared which is 16. So it's 16 pi centimeters squared. Okay.
not so hard. All right, that's it for this lesson. Try the practice problem, send your homework, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.